Dr. Greg Williams talks about the, the Jesus um, defying expectations, sabi nga niya. And so, our topic for today, in line with the season, the Advent, this is our th the third Sunday of the Advent or the coming, I titled it, The Miracle Birth of Jesus Christ. When we think about miracle, um, and dami pong definition niya, ano? Ang miracle po ay... Ako minsan sinasabi natin, oh, nagkaroon ng milagro na yung dapat mangyari ay hindi nangyari. Pero usually, in a positive way. Okay? So halimbawa, may, may, may sakit po sa atin, and sabi ng doktor, uh, ay nako, yung kaso po ng inyong anak ay malalapo at uh, be ready. Meaning to say, uh, you know, that the child could die. And then for some reason, unknown reason, something happens that just is very different and we and we call that a miracle however not everything na iba yung nangyari is is we we will term it miracle especially pag negative you know some people oh ma, 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 i think you, you will live up to another 10 years and then all of a sudden in just a couple of months that fate changes and then so do we will we call that a miracle so hindi naman so so miracle is really, really specific to not just circumstances, but miracle is specific to the working of God. It is the working of God through us in the life of people. It is the working of God in the circumstances of history. It is the working of God in making sure that the course of our actions even though it looks very, very bad, turns out in the end to follow His sovereign will. And this is one example that we can see in the birth of Jesus Christ. So, miracle is something extraordinary. Miracle is something that is, just defies the natural laws of uh, physics or, or, or uh, natural laws of, 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 uh, of nature. And but always, we have to think of it in terms of the divine intervention. Okay. Our passage is in Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. Si Matthew po ay isang hudyo. Siya rin po ay isang uh, disciple ni Jesus, original 12 disciples. And nag po yung kanyang libro, uh, or yung kanyang gospel, uh, tracing back the genealogy of Jesus Christ from the time of Abraham. So, yung 17 verses po, bago po yung ating tatalakayan na passage, is really about different people, names of people from the time of Abraham, uh, including the time of King David. So, Matthew shows that Jesus is a descendant of Abraham. Therefore, he is a Jew. He also highlights this because his audience is primarily Jewish people. And when ang sinasabi po na si Jesus ay isang Hudyo, and you are also a Jew, there is some identification that automatically uh, is formed in that. And also, wala hong nagiging bias ang mga Hudyo. Pag sinabi natin si Jesus din po ay isang Hudyo katulad, katulad nyo. Kaysa, kung sinasabi na si Jesus ay walang kinalaman sa ating history. Pero sinasabi ni Matthew, si Jesus po traces his lineage back to Abraham. He also traces his lineage to King David. Kung sa mga Hudyo po, very important po yung alam nila na siya po ay, si Jesus po ay galing sa lineage ni uh, King David, sapagkat alam po nila yung prophecy that a Messiah is going to come sa line po ni David. And also, I think Matthew is also emphasizing the fact na King David, lineage po ng royalty yan, ng king, and Jesus Christ eventually will be recognized as the king of Israel. Although not at their time, but he is the king. So his messiahship and lordship is seen as the hope of the nation of Israel, is the hope of the Jews. 
So, punta na po tayo sa Matthew 1. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. So, ang tinutukoy po ni Matthew very clearly is how the birth of Jesus came about. So, ano ho ba yung circumstances? Hindi lang ho na pinanganak si Jesus, tapos na ang istorya. Kundi, ini-emphasize po ni Matthew yung mga detalye. Kung paano nga pinanganak si Jesus. At sinasabi ni Matthew to on how, sapagkat mukhang merami dayong dapat makita at dapat parang pansinin sa kanyang kapanganakan sapagkat mukhang marami po ang sinatawag nating miracles. Something very different. And Jesus is also highlighting the how because God is really involved in everything. Very obvious po that God is actually working and directly orchestrating the events on the birth of Jesus Christ. So let's remember that as we go through the passage on the how. The how of His birth and the how God has actually brought everything about. So Matthew is highlighting the special and providential circumstances and events leading to the birth of Jesus Christ, His uh, conception and birth. The circumstances were not typical. Everything was miraculous and divinely orchestrated. God's sovereignty is seen in the fulfillment of the promise of the coming Messiah given to Abraham and to David. And also we will see that the lineage was unbroken from the time of Abraham. The promise of Israel's Savior is about to come true in the lives of Mary and Joseph. Remember the last, uh, last Sunday when we had the reading of the Christmas story? The perspective was actually from the side of Mary. Luke, the Gospel of Luke, looked at the story, the birth of Jesus Christ, from the perspective of Mary. Here in Matthew, it is from the perspective of Joseph. So, magkaiba po. Iba po yung pinapakita. This is the other side of the coin. Kanga. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Pag sinabing pledged po, in other words, they were betrothed or engaged. Sa ating pong... Uh, term ngayon, we engage, engagement. No? Wala po tayong ganyan sa Filipino kasing term. Eh. Sa, sa English or sa Western culture, we have that engagement period in which meron palang uh, period in which you are, you are recognized as a couple. Uh, however, ang difference po nung time na yun, when you say you are engaged or pledged to be married, you let that know to the public. Okay? There is, uh, there is that uh, alam po ng public yan. And as we will see later on, it is actually like they were already married. So, yun po ang malaking kaibahan pag sinabi nyo, sila po ay engage, uh, maaari pang yung engagement na yan will be broken. Okay? Sa kanila po, pag sinabing engage na, there is that recognition of everybody else na, oh, husband and wife na po sila. And they use that term, husband and wife. So, as we will see later on, the words husband, wife, divorce, prior to their marriage, actually is written there. So, at this point, they were not yet married. They were engaged. So, sila po ni Mary and Joseph. Uh, so, iba ho yung kultura, they were recognized as almost already married and the words wife, husband is already used. Joseph comes from the line of David also. Sinasabi po. Okay? Married to Joseph. Uh, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Joseph found out out. Now, how? Uh, medyo... Hindi ho explain kung how Joseph came to know. 
perhaps they talked about it. Maybe sinabi ni Mary, you know, I'm pregnant. And what a shock. Okay? What a shock for, for Joseph. Hindi uh, natin nakikita ngayon. Pero actually, remember, you were already considered married. And now, suddenly, nalaman po ni, uh, ni Joseph na pregnant na pala si Mary. Um, this one, she was found to be a pregnant through the Holy Spirit. This is already a commentary of Matthew, but Joseph didn't know. Okay? Verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, see, husband was already being used before, remember, pledge, but now the word husband is used, was faithful to the law. Joseph, as we can see, is from the line of David. So Joseph also takes on that identity that he is a righteous person because of his lineage. Galing po ako ang, ang ano ko, ang ninuno ko po si David. And he takes that seriously. And he is faithful to the law. He obeys the law. He's very careful in making sure he obeys the law. And yet did not want to expose her so you know, to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Why divorce? They're not yet married. Again, the, the, the seriousness of an engagement in their culture. But the divorce was being thought of by Joseph because that's what the law requires. That's what the law requires. In the Old Testament, when you found out that your wife-to-be had committed adultery, that divorce is to be the automatic thing that has to happen. That's why Joseph was thinking of divorcing her because he was faithful to the law. He's not doing it because he wants to, simply. You know, I don't like you anymore, Mary, but because that's what the law requires of him to do. So, hindi ho pwedeng kahit gugustuhin po niyang ituloy ang kanilang samahan because he was faithful to the Old Testament law and that's what the law requires, he has to do it. So we see now that the, the reason Joseph wants to divorce Mary is because he was faithful to the law. Not because he, he hated Mary or was angry or whatever, even though he may have felt that. So yan pong importante nating, uh, importanteng makita po natin. Quite quietly, now this shows now how he cares for Mary. Okay? So before they were married and had sexual contact, Je- uh, Joseph found out that uh, she, w- she was pregnant, um, but she didn't, he didn't know. It was from the Holy Spirit that God was already working. So, remember our, our, the first verse that we read is, how the birth of Jesus came about. And these are all the circumstances. It is actually through the Holy Spirit. And Joseph had no way of confirming that. Hindi pa niya alam. Hindi pa niya alam. Mary had a direct vision of an angel talking to her, surprising her. Diba? Sabi, Greetings, Mary. You have found favor with God. Joseph never had that kind of an experience. So he didn't know. Mary knew that she will become pregnant. David didn't know that. I am sorry, Joseph didn't know that. So, how does Mary appear to jo- Joseph at this time? She was an unfaithful wife. Okay, She was an unfaithful wife. Now, could that have hurt David? I mean, Joseph also. What kind of feelings ang naiisip din po diyan? I'm sure he was hurt. I'm sure he was discouraged. I'm sure he was... Ano, parang pinagtaksi lang po siya. Yan po yung mga naiisip po siguro ni... You know. And yet, he, he was very kind to her in that he wants to divorce her uh, quietly. 
So he plans to do just that, divorce Mary, but also intended to do it quietly. This is not to make it public. Kasi po, pag may divorce, usually public, ano po yan? Public announcement. This will save Mary from public humiliation and scandal. Kasi nga, Mary will be looked at as an unfaithful person. At saka, alam niyo po ba sa Old Testament law, what, what the penalty is for someone who is death. Death by stoning. Tama po. Joseph didn't like that to happen to Mary. Divorcing her quietly would perhaps make people presume that Mary's pregnancy was from a normal union of a husband and wife. So that pag ano po, pag naging, nag, na, nabuntis na po at kitang-kita na po ng public, ano, they would probably have think, ah, oh, that's because of, you know, they were together for a while, ganyan, ganyan. This shows the kind of character that Joseph had. He's faithfully, he faithfully obeys the law but doesn't use it to disgrace Mary. And I think this is very important for us to realize. We know that the law requires this, but grace is something that Joseph applied. He was gracious toward Mary. He was so gracious towards Mary. And so we read, but after he had considered this, so after he was really thinking of the plan, and I'm sure this took several days, you know, this took several, I don't know, maybe even maybe a week or so na parang pinag-iisipan ho niyang kanyang gagawin, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now, Joseph is coming to know the how of the conception of Mary or his, her pregnancy because it is from the Holy Spirit. Notice also the words, do not be afraid. This has been repeated so many times in the birth of Jesus Christ account. This was the same thing that was said to Mary. Do not be afraid. To take Mary as your wife. So afraid here is not necessarily like fear, but afraid is like you are apprehens- apprehensive, you are like you don't like to. So, you know, so para sa kanya, look, take her as your wife and don't worry. Do not, do not be afraid, do not worry. Do not be anxious. Do not feel betrayed. Because, sabi niya, what is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. The same instruction din po yan kay Mary. Because he will save his people from their sins. The word Jesus means Savior. So this is what dream. And so when Joseph woke up, he knew that that was an extraordinary dream. That was something so real, even though it was described as a dream because it was not a direct appearance of the angel to him, unlike Mary. He knew that this was actually God talking to him through the angel. So, remember, Joseph was settled on divorcing Mary. Yet, God intervened divinely acting by sending an angel who appeared to Joseph in a dream. And then also, look at that, son of David. Son of David. So, Joseph is really holding on to his being upright. And God recognizes that. You are the son of David. So all the more that the desire of David, to, uh, so, desire of Joseph to follow the Old Testament, now 
God is like twisting that a bit and say, don't worry about it because it is actually the Holy Spirit working in Mary. And she will conceive. The son to be born, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going ahead. Um, So the message was that he is to take Mary as his wife and to realize that the baby in her womb is the long-awaited Savior of Israel. Think about that for a moment. Kung kayo po si Mary, kung kayo po si Joseph, to realize that the prophesied Messiah that you've been reading about in your Bible, the Old Testament, is about to be, to come true. Yung mga prophecies po of old, sa Isaiah, is now going to come true. And sa inyo po, manggagaling in your own womb, or sa inyo, bilang isang tatay po, how would that make you feel? This is incredible. This is incredible. Joseph must be thinking, really? Ako ang mag-aalaga nitong anak na to who will become the savior of Israel? That was a big responsibility. You know? That's a big, parang, that's hard to describe. But the fulfillment of the prophecy is coming through, through them. God is not acting only through history, but He's acting directly through them. He is going to be called Jesus' Savior. He will save His people from what? from, hindi ho nakasulat dito, from their sins. Okay? Uh, Naglolo ko lang po kasi yung, siguro ibang version po yung PowerPoint dito. Uh, kung may chok po ako, susulat ko po dyan. <laughs> so that's what it says there, okay? Uh, but that is very important. The focus is, the coming of Jesus Christ is not to save Israel from the oppression of the Romans. It's for their sins. It's, so that's, that's very important. Save from the oppression and the power of sin over their lives, the whole of Israel. Jesus' mission is to release His people from the bondage of sin. Let's pause for a moment. We are, if we are living in the time of, of Mary and Joseph, our main concern is the oppression of a foreign government, okay? Having dominion over the Israelites, I uh, mean, the Isra- Israel, and therefore, they are under, they, they really want national freedom. So their concern is freedom from what? From oppression. But right from the very beginning, Jesus Christ's main mission is the freeing of His people, saving His people from sin. And I think that's very important for us to recognize that in this season of Advent, of Jesus Christ coming, the focus, one major focus we ought to have is that He came to save us from our sins. Rarely, unfortunately, very rarely is sin talked about during Christmas. Rarely do we hear about songs talking about sins. We're being saved from sins during Christmas. But that is the main reason Jesus Christ came, to save us from our sins. In verse 22 now, So, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. So, it's going back to the the Old Testament prophecies that this is going to happen. And verse 23, ito po yung um, quote from Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God 
with us. So Matthew is reminding his readers of the Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah 7 of the miraculous virgin birth. Even that virgin birth was already written hundreds of years ago. Or I'm not sure how, when Isaiah was written, probably thousands of years ago before Jesus actually came. So God is directing the events and making His promise come to pass. So, kung kayo po ay isang Hudyo at very familiar po kayo dun sa Old Testament, you keep on hoping for that. And then all of a sudden, it is happening. Okay? It is happening. The son to be born will be called Emmanuel. Alam po natin, ibig sabihin ng Emmanuel, which means God was with us. Or also, it means God in the flesh. It could also mean God with us or God among us. Another is God as one of us. One of us. He entered our humanity into our flesh. That's why it's called incarnation, becoming like one of us. The prophecy shows that Jesus is the Son of God, but also the Son of Man. That's why it's very important for us to realize this story because through Mary, Jesus was the Son of Man. Through God, the, work, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is the Son of God. He's not the Son of David. Okay? He's not the Son of David. He is the Son of God. So that's why He is both the Son of God and the Son of Man. He calls Himself Son of Man at times. He calls Himself the Son of God at times. So he took on the nature of the physical human being, which he adds on to his divine being. He is 100% God, and he's also 100% man. He has to be man in order to die, remember? For the sins, to save man from sin. So he has to be a man in order to die, but also he has to be God to cover for the sins of all humanity, past, present, and future. As God, He rises up again to conquer death and to pave the way for the resurrection of those who accept and trust in Him. So Emmanuel is God with us and actively living His divine nature in us. He took us to Himself and made us one with Him. So the, our oneness with Him and His oneness with us is the Emmanuel. Think of that again. Jesus Christ came to become a human being, and that is Emmanuel. Pero beyond that, it is really Him making us one with, you know, making us one with Him. So He's the one actually coming to make us one with Him. Our oneness with Him and His oneness with us is Emmanuel. Verse 24 now, when Jesus, when, sorry, when jo Joseph woke up, so remember, he had a dream, and that dream is actually a fulfillment of a prophecy. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. So eventually, he took him as his wife, and they lived together. Verse 25 says, But he did not consummate their marriage. They had never had physical contact until she gave birth to a son uh, and he gave him the name Joseph. Why is it important? Why is it important that he did not consummate their marriage? Why? You know what? Joseph understood that his dream was a direct message from God to him. Who obeyed, he obeyed the instructions of the angel. The passage also shows that Joseph did not have sexual relations with Mary until she gave birth to a son. This is to affirm the virgin birth of Jesus, okay? which means that he was conceived solely by the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit without the agency or help of a human father. So he doesn't want to intervene with what God is doing. So he, they never had that sexual relationship 
that might be construed as Jesus is actually the father of, of I mean, Je Jesus is actually the son of Joseph. So he, he allowed God to actually just work it all out because that's what the prophecy has said. So can you see the, the character of, of, of Joseph here? And can we also see that God is the one responsible solely? And we can also affirm that indeed, she gave birth to a son being a virgin. She conceived the son of being a virgin, a fulfillment of the prophecy in the Old Testament. So again, strictly speaking, Jesus was not the son of Joseph, but she was the son of Mary. When the baby was born, J J Joseph and Mary gave him the name of J Jesus, as was instructed by the angel, which means Savior. The account, e even the name of Jesus, by the way, was not something thought of by the parents, diba? Right? It was actually a very specific name given by the angel to be given to Jesus Christ. Can we now see even more how the how of the birth of Jesus Christ came to be? God was in everything, in all of the circumstances. God was working His will. The account of Matthew focuses on Joseph's perspective of the story. And for the male audience, this is something for us to consider and perhaps meditate on. For the women... Luke's account would probably be something you can identify better with. How the birth of Jesus came to be shows that God is intimately involved in the lives of His people in order to accomplish His will, in order to fulfill His promises, and ultimately save man from their sins. We also see that God's divine will overrides natural physical laws. Because it is impossible for a virgin to conceive. But it, it is because of God's working that that doesn't even matter to God. It was impossible for Mary to have a child on her own except through the Holy Spirit. God was working in that too. So we see that nothing is impossible or too difficult with God to accomplish. God intercedes directly in the lives of people to comfort them. To comfort them. Remember when he said to Mary, the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. And also to Joseph, do not be afraid. This is actually to comfort them. It's also to confirm God's divine plans that he's bringing about. This is seen also when the angel appeared to Mary and Joseph on separate occasions to reveal to them the plan of God in their circumstances. What, I, what I'm interested about is how come hindi po sinabi ng angel kay Joseph bago pa siya nag-isip ng kanyang gagawing i-divorce si Mary? Diba? Bakit kay Mary ahead of time sinabi na ng Panginoon sa kanya through the angel na ito po mangyayari sa'yo? Bakit si Joseph parang all of a sudden kailangan niyang mabigla pa na buntis na pala si Mary? Why? You know? But we see that in the end, it really doesn't matter how, how God works with us. So it shows that God works in, to us in different ways. Yeah. But you know what? If that didn't happen, I would not know the true character of, David, of, of Joseph. Can we see the character of Joseph in his being gracious to Mary, in his being righteous because he wants to divorce her? So, God's intervention in our lives bring out the best in us. It is meant to make us even realize how God really loves us. 
During those moments that Mary and Joseph were troubled and confused, the words of the angel were meant to reassure, to comfort, to encourage. This should make us rejoice that our God comforts and encourages us too when we can't seem to understand what is going on in our lives in spite of our obedience to Him. Christians are not exempted from being confused, are not exempted from being discouraged, are not exempted from questioning God during times of, during these times of, you know, confusion, even though we have dedicated ourselves to obeying Him. Yet, we can almost hear the words of the angel talking to us and says, do not be afraid. So when we dedicate our lives to God, when we are righteous, when we obey Him, we, that's our desire, whatever the circumstances, let's hear those words of the angels, do not be afraid. In other words, in Jesus' own words, peace be with you. God wants us to have peace because He is in charge of our circumstances. He intervenes and He acts to accomplish what is best for us. His miracles are not always pleasant. Okay? As in the case of Mary, as in the case of Joseph. Initially, it wasn't pleasant. It's so disturbing. Uh, that's, that's so hard to accept, to, to, to embrace. But in the end, he accomplishes a greater will for the good of uh, many. In our passage, we also see that salvation through Jesus Christ is purely an act of God. No human intervention there. Our salvation has come not because of our own initiative, because we so prayed for it. Mary wasn't praying for that. Joseph wasn't praying for that. Salvation hasn't come because of our righteousness, of our desire, or our decision that God has to agree to. No. Salvation in Jesus Christ is a gift freely given to us that we cannot earn. God came in spite of the sin of humanity. God came in spite of the sin of humanity. God came precisely because of the sin of humanity. God came to us Another way to say it, God searched for us. We wouldn't know how desperately sinful we really are until the light of God has enlightened our minds to understand the, the terribleness, you know, the wickedness of our sins and who we really are as sinners. His light also showed just how much we needed His mercy and forgiveness. That is why Jesus was born. God's gift to us that we may be saved from our sins. I think we need to understand first just who, how sinful we really are. I think in order to appreciate this gift of God, we need to ask God to enlighten us. What, what is sin really? What is that? How serious is it? That eventually, as we will celebrate it, come, I think March or April, we will, now, we will come to the Lent season, in which we will see the great sacrifice that God, Jesus Christ has to do on our behalf. But this is the, begin, the beginning. So in terms of the application of what we have just read, I've listed three. Knowing just how much God has done for us. Knowing that 
salvation is free gift. Knowing that He has given Jesus Christ to us for free. Knowing that Jesus Christ has come to us in the flesh. Knowing that Jesus Christ to us is actually accessible. And not only that, He has already embraced us be before we even embraced Him. Knowing that, what should be our response? I ask you to consider that maybe let us receive Jesus into our lives every day. You know? Yes, once you receive Jesus Christ, that's it. But sometimes we have to reenact that receiving Jesus into our lives every day, every moment of our lives because we are not yet totally free from our sins and because we need to be transformed from being people who are not like Him to people that are looking more and more like Him in order that we can be transformed. So let us receive Jesus into our lives and allow Him to transform us. Mary was transformed. Joseph was transformed same transformation can happen to each one of us. Also, let us treasure His gift of forgiveness and salvation. Jesus came to save His people from their sins. It is not to give us good life. It is not to make us healthy. It is not to make us rich, primarily but that we may be forgiven and receive salvation. And therefore, let us live accordingly. What does that mean? We should not feel guilt. We should not feel like, oh, you know, I'm discouraged again. But, you know, we're forgiven. God has given us for His forgiveness. Let us treasure that. We are saved, already saved. And number three, we need to commit to obey His every word. The Old Testament were the words that Joseph and Mary were living by. And when they understood it better, when the angel came, the direct word from God, they obeyed. When Jesus Christ came, and magnified the law, we need to obey Him also in the words. And most of that is written in the New Testament. So we need to commit to obey His word even though, even though we can't always understand. Did Mary understood the extent of what she has to go through? I don't think so. Did Joseph understood that same thing of being a father, temporary father to him? I don't think so. Yet, that's what is required. Commit. To do exactly just that, even though we don't always understand. So in conclusion, brethren, in this Advent season, in this celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, we can see in our passage that God has been at work throughout the history of man. He accomplishes His will and makes His promises come true for the good of man. He gave us Jesus Christ, miraculously gave us Jesus Christ, born to become like one of us so that He can be with us and in us. Jesus has all the authority and power to make us become Christians who share the good news of His coming and show forth His love to all the world. This is all possible because we have a God who is a miracle-working God. We have a God who intervenes in our lives. We have a God who works in our seemingly mundane and trivial 
everyday circumstances. We only need to come to Him in boldness, in full assurance, in order to enjoy our being one with Him and His being one with us. Jesus has come to us. Indeed, Jesus, our Savior and our Emmanuel, again, is with us and in all of us. Let us therefore come to Him, rejoice in Him this Advent season, and may His love, joy, and peace be felt and I wish all of us today a very Merry Christmas.